folks, we do have a preview of some vice presidential potential picks. The audience has uh, been asked who they think would be a good choice, and various names came up. Um, uh, one of them was, of course, Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah. He's made a big splash. Ron DeSantis, who's made in, making an appearance today in South Carolina, we just found out. Um, obviously, Tim Scott, Byron Donalds, and a, a big uh, presence here for Tulsi Gabbard. Um, very interesting. Um, are, and Christy Nome as well, I should say. Right. Are, are, are they all on your short yeah, list? And- he confirmed it right there that they're all on the short list. I will say... Uh, you know, th- th- that that's interesting because, one, Christy Nome probably didn't get it fair there because it was kind of overshadowed. Tulsi was still getting applauded and Christy Nome did get some. And she, we've done work for the governor. I think that's great. Uh, you know, a great potential pick. I just think it's very interesting who people are reacting to uh, when they hear the name, Logan. And yeah. it's people who have been who some have been very close to President Trump, like Christy Nome and others like Tulsi Gabbard, who have been new to our yeah, someone, side of the movement. Someone that you may have a hurdle to get over. From, like, I'm looking even at comments. They, there's some people like, well, I like her, her on your broadcast, but I'm not sure how I feel about, about her because a lot of people know she ran as a Democrat for president not that long ago, four years ago, uh, but has obviously had a massive change, uh, or really you've had the Democratic Party have a massive change, and she's kind of fallen in line with a big new group of voters. So it would not be unlike President Trump, I feel like, to go for someone who's a bit more outside, a bit interesting, brings in a new crop of people, doesn't just activate your own supporters. The question is, does picking someone who's an outsider make people less excited about voting for a Trump presidency? I kind of don't think it does. I think those voters are there. So if you can find someone who can maybe grab that 1% or 2% that maybe we're going to go with a RFK Jr. or we're going to go with a third party or maybe just we're disenfranchised by the Biden administration... That may be a good idea. Now, obviously, we also saw uh, some really great words about Tim Scott, uh, another great person, another friend of this show. You do, though, go, does Tim Scott bring anybody new to the table? Yeah. I'm not so sure he does. I think that he probably brings in all of your traditional Republicans and your Trump, you know, MAGA kind of Republicans. I think what he does is kind of like a Mike Pence move. He brings in your social conservatives, people who might be nervous about Trump. Uh, you would believe he could certainly govern on day one if necessary. I think also missing from the list, because that was just a list of people that she was talking yeah. to there, Governor Sanders has been talked about a lot from Arkansas, yeah. uh, J.D. Vance from Ohio, and there's always yeah, the People are unknown. saying Carrie Lake, where is she? I've seen those in the comments. Yeah. People are asking a lot of those ones oh, who were... It kind of depends on where you're doing the forum. Some of those are the ones, too, have been advocating more for it. We haven't really heard from President Trump saying those are people, but when it was specifically asked... Are these people on your short list? He said, yes. These so are all on it. So because he's confirmed a good chunk of people. You know, if you're in South Carolina, you may not be thinking as much about what's happening in Arizona, uh, you know, to Cary Lake, because mm-hmm. you're in South Carolina and you're following different candidates. Certainly people like Tim Scott, who's, who's from home state. You've also, uh, you might just notice different people. And the people have actually also been on the, this campaign trail, uh, which we heard a lot from. So Tim Scott, Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis. By the way, I didn't. President Trump did not take that moment. By the way, and I thought it was interesting to even like take a shot at. It. And I think that shows you too. Like once a primary is over, DeSantis. Yeah, you know, with Trump, he said it's over. That's moving on. Yeah, like and if, he you, if him. you if you got a uh, if Tr- President Trump started getting polls back showing this is the pick that you know puts you over the edge. Yeah, they're both in Florida, so there's a little problem there. But it seems like there's some workarounds. I've seen a lot of people say, well, here's how you even, yeah, there's even work, top level there, there's politicians. Work, there are workarounds. I don't. I don't think that's where he goes. I don't. Uh, I don't think Ron really wants that. And then, of course, he said Christy Nome. Uh, t- Laura Ingram said Christy Nome, and then Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, of course, part of our Seculo team here. A lot of people understand we brought Tulsi on as a commentator here because we do want to have somewhat of a diverse group of people. If you have Mike Pompeo and you have Tulsi Gabbard, you're going to get very different answers. So you know, these aren't necessarily people we're pitching as vice president or president, someone who can give you, um, within still somewhat of our world, a different point of view, and I feel like that's very important. I think that, that uh, there are a lot of folks in that Trump world would probably be more comfortable with Tulsi. I think traditional Republicans might be a little more concerned if you've been voting conservative, but I think what 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 she brought up that was right, Logan, is that for independents who are looking for someone they know isn't just controlled by the Republican Party or even the Trump wing of the Republican Party, that, that does, especially in a year where Biden's losing popularity amongst young people, 
it does bring uh, some interesting yeah. opportunities. Yeah, I'm sure that is the conversation that's happening. I have no insider knowledge to know that's the conversation happening, but just looking at the facts, and the facts is she would bring in a very different group of voters that currently President Trump may not have, and currently Joe Biden may have. They may be leaning more towards that way, but if you can find someone who can kind of get that, you know, it's a crowd that's on X, the crowd that's listening to Rogan, uh, this is what she is a regular on. She obviously has a show on X. It is a different group of voters who are not as activated uh, to vote traditionally Republican. He didn't say those are the only people on my list, so I wouldn't take it that way. Uh, but he he uh, and he also didn't say um, I would uh, take that person or that person off. But the others are on the list. He said they're all on the list right now. It's a pretty broad. So it also shows you that where his thinking is, at least publicly, is still broad. And, and uh, you'll see, you know, potentially other names. I will remind you, like I did again, it wasn't until July that Mike Pence was announced. So you can take uh, a plenty of time when you've got a convention coming up. Uh, but it may be a little different this time because there has not been so much of a primary. Once, if President Trump wins South Carolina the way it looks like he could win by like 65%, and then he goes into Super Tuesday, and we're assuming the Supreme Court is... At some point, it makes clear that you can't just take him off the ballot. Uh, the primary is kind of over, Logan, and so you could get a VP pick sooner because you need uh, you need a strong surrogate for you to get out there. It's whether you decide. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's or kind do of you picking, send them all out there? Do you send everyone out there because you know they've all essentially endorsed you instead of picking someone early and giving really a lot of time for ammunition against them? You know, months and months. That's not really great. Uh, that's why you saw uh, him, Pence not getting picked until late. A lot of times, sure, this is decisions based on where the country's moving also over the summer. Uh-huh. So you kind of want to decide on that. But also, is it because you don't want to give him too much time? It's kind of like the idea of why would he have debated? All you were doing was giving an opportunity for something to go wrong when you were leading with such an aggressive number. Yep. So I feel like very similarly in that. I think it's also important, as uh, Will, our producer pointed out, you've got the left trying to time up in court. So you need people who you trust to get out on the campaign trail. So if you could have 10 of those. But if that one who gets selected certainly is going to draw a bigger crowd. Yeah, it'll be who it's going to be. And I think maybe you look at that. You start, again, having some official events where they're the speaker, not President Trump. And they're the main draw. And start seeing, are they drawing the people in the places that they need to be drawing them? That doesn't just mean in the reddest of red states. Yeah. You do need to draw them there. But you also need to be able to draw them in some places that are more purple or the states that President Trump just didn't carry, uh, that he did that he did win in 2016, that he didn't in 2020, can they draw there? Obviously, you can't compare his crowd numbers to anyone. That's not fair. Whether it's Tim Scott, whether that was Elise, whether that was uh, even Christy Nome, and obviously Tulsi Gabbard, these are all people that are friends of the ACLJ, uh, some we've worked with directly, uh, some that you have real relationships with, and it shows some of the impact that we have here and what it means, obviously, to be an ACLJ supporter. 